thank you everyone uh, for joining today uh, we are just waiting for megali but i will just start the conversation a little bit forward because uh, we have to look at the time and keep the time on track and uh, people uh, our guests have also joined in so um, thank you everyone for joining today in this art explore uh, 13th edition so i'm pranamita and uh, Uh, most of you know about shield art some of you don't know so shield art is a non profit initiative it's uh, founded by uh, me with uh, some artist friends and we all are working voluntarily with uh, some initiatives to have a dialogue in the field of visual art and we mostly work towards uh, helping um, a young artist uh, and working with them and uh, and also we work with many senior artists who help us to guide or uh, work for this young artists like we did uh, exhibitions in the past uh, of young artists but whenever we do an exhibition we also call uh, senior artists to come in and help and guide these young fellows we did many talks uh, and i think meghali has joined in uh, but yes of course this introduction is a part of the whole program and uh, um, then we did some studio visits al also for some senior mm -hmm. artist uh, so uh, where we took young artists or student artist to their places like we did studio visit of jagannath panda iranna veer munshi so these are some of the part and during this uh, lockdown we are doing this uh, online uh, discussions and talk with different artists and it is giving us an opportunity to connect with artists from different parts of the country uh, or sometimes even outside so it's been a pleasure so uh, and um, that's a brief about shield art now uh, not taking much time i will just introduce our guest for today uh, who is uh, arpan mukherji so um, arpan mukherji has taken photography as his medium of expression uh, when while studying uh, he did his bfa and mfa in print making from uh, vishwa bharati university shanti niketan in 2001 and currently he is a associate professor as well as heading the department of print making kala bhavan vishwa bharati shanti niketan india which is a famous uh, college one of the famous called art college of india we all know and his works are based on socio economic and political issues the narrative uh, they are narrative in nature and uh, represented in documentary format which we will see and hear from him today he is among the very few artists who work in alternative photography and in the country and has developed medium like uh, gummed dichromat and uh, salt print wet plate and uh, many other which uh, he will describe today we will see he did extensive research on 19th century photography methods and material since 2001 and incorporated into the mainstream visual art arena and he participated in many uh, important exhibitions around the country even in out international exhibitions and uh, so some of uh, them to name uh, some recent one i would like to mention so in 2019 he participated in chennai photo biennale 2019 he participated in the first kolkata photo festival in kolkata a uh, participated in a group show titled text 3 body as text curated by subha lakshmi shukla art and soul gallery mumbai in 2019 he also participated in lishwi international photography festival china and uh, also represented in studio goppo in serendipity art festival goa in a show that uh, uh, titled look stranger curated by rahab alana and uh, he will be in conversation with uh, meghali dr meghali goshwami uh, she is a uh, art historian and uh, she has written many published many books she is also an associate professor and she is leading the head of the department at uh, art history department at kala bhavan shanti niketan so uh, meghali uh, studied from government college of art and craft guwahati and completed her master degree in art history from national museum institute of history of art Converse, Converse, Con conservation and museology new delhi 
and she obtained her PhD degree in fine arts from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee. And uh, she um, used to write for many publications, uh, national and international, uh, for many magazines. And she published also many books. And, uh, but I'm not going into detail of all of them because it will uh, take us our time, cut some of the time, but she has published many books, important books, and contributed uh, widely uh, in um, publication and literature on contemporary art and uh, also art historical context. So welcome Meghali and Arpan uh, Mukherjee for today's session and uh, thank you. So Meghali, uh, is she there or she got disconnected? She's there. So you can unmute and open your uh, video as well, Meghali. And I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's an information for all who have joined. The, um, the, is it, uh, the call will get disconnected by uh, 4.40, I think, approximately. We will intimate you just two, three minutes before. And then we will rejoin with the same process and it will give another 40 minutes. So thank you, uh, Arpanji. And uh, thank you, Meghali. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So Meghali, yes, uh, can start. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, good evening to everybody. And uh, thank you, Pranamita, uh, for inviting us. And I'm really excited because I really uh, am into watching Arpan's entire work process. So today, this is a great opportunity for me to speak with him and then to know more about him. And I'm sure the viewers will also enjoy about his experimental work, what he is doing. And uh, I also thank uh, uh, Shield Art Foundation for uh, giving an opportunity so, for, to me to discuss with him about his work. So, yes. So, uh, Arpan, can you hear me? Yes. So uh, I yes, will yeah. share the slide. I will just make you the uh, host so that you can share your slide. Yes. So Arpan, uh, good afternoon. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes. Arpan, uh, so uh, as we all know that uh, you are actually since last few years, uh, there was a major shift from graphics to photography. Uh, what made uh, you shift from uh, graphics to photography and why did you choose, choose this medium and in what way you experimenting with it? Can you please share with us? Yeah, actually, uh, it's all started uh, while I was, uh, I was uh, in, a, in the department and as a student, I was working with printmaking. And uh, you know the the major characteristics of printmaking is that that it 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 is something very very uh, intuitive. It is something which uh, always ask the artist to experiment to explore more. So it's it's uh, it's not that uh, that a very static medium. Printmaking has always these these options, these these possibilities of working with with multiple domains, multiple areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the domain is this, that it's very inviting to work with, uh, to, to explore more, to experiment more, both in terms of technique, in terms of language, and, uh, and in terms of aesthetics, it, it, can, it can possibly give it. So uh, uh, it all started with that, but then, then I had an inclination towards different things like chemistry, uh, the the surface making the different kind of in political position I was having and then uh, my teachers were very influencing uh, they had a okay. definitive opinion uh, orientations mm. and that uh, a lot in the beginning later on it uh, started I think uh, it would be better if I can sh start sharing yeah a few of yeah, yeah yeah before your... before I mean uh, you share your visuals uh, something very interesting is your background. So, I mean, can we just, I know, I know you are also involved in a, in a, I mean, you know, for research and experimenting printmaking and you have a studio, Studio Gokpo, okay, yes. which you have named and uh, where like a lot of workshops you are conducting and you are yes. also doing lots of residential programs. 
so after you keep on slow after we discuss all these things i would also like to know or we all would love to know more about your studio and uh, studio and your involvement with the artists and how you participate with them yeah so you can also show your slides now for some yes. in whatever so way it, yes so in the beginning like it's all started with the conventional methodology the conventional way of looking uh, I, I was uh, I was creating a bit of original works, but then uh, some or the other I was not there in the beginning. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll share some of the works in the beginning just uh, to show. Yeah, yeah, please do that. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, is it visible? Yes, it's visible. We can see. So it all started uh, with uh, uh, with a kind of an uh, etching and particularly all the conventional printmaking methods and exploring those methods, exploring the surface quality, exploring the subject area uh, uh, and all these stuffs. Uh, slowly it started. These are my works, which are uh, which I have done like 20 years back. These are pretty old works, but then the reason why I'm showing these two three works in the beginning is this that uh, the concern was uh, quite a similar same concern the concern i have today and it all started from looking at my own surroundings with uh, with a, a, a political position with a, with a position from where i can uh, i can discover myself i can discover my own surroundings i can discover my state uh, so uh, the 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 study the the book I was reading through the the area I was going through, and uh, the area which been discussed with my uh, main course of that time was definitely what has a definitive direction towards the subaltern structures, uh, the structures which I was talking about at that point of time, uh, and slowly uh, that that structure started. Uh, Initially, it was a pretty uh, normal, uh, a general statement, and slowly a kind of a satirical point of view started developing in my works. Uh, simultaneously, uh, simultaneously, I realized that the the conventional medium, the conventional printmaking medium, doesn't have that capacity to explore the idea I was working with. Uh, so I had a uh, I had a problem with it. Uh, I was looking for a popular images. I was I was looking. I was I was trying to depict a popular kind of an uh, elements in our society, in my own surroundings, in a typical Bengali middle class family, the expectations of those uh, young stars of, of that time of my age. Uh, so, and somehow or the other, the, the conventional methods were not, uh, particularly medium were not, uh, not useful for that. I, I thought okay, these are not expressive enough. And then I started developing uh, my own methodology to express it, my own own process to explore it, and uh, probably this is the very beginning of incorporation of process into uh, work of art. Uh, in my case, I started looking process as as a metaphor, as as a as as a method of developing a body of work. These are the works which uh, which are very old work, my master's days, like twenty years back, uh, but these were beginning. These works were beginning where I was working on large size aluminium plates. I was etching aluminium plates, and those who, who works with printmaking they know that aluminium plate is particularly not a kind of an uh, not a kind of an uh, uh, conventional material for etching. Uh, but I was doing it with aluminium plate, and then I was printing serigraphy images using serigraphy silkscreen on top of the images. Uh, so. The, and and then eventually what was happening uh, it was like uh, it was a print with uh, of cell screen on 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 top of an intaglio inked aluminium plate and i was not having multiple copies of it but i was having only uh, one single unique print uh, which uh, which had that uh, that uh, quality of print the aesthetics of prints but then it's a single copy and it's not yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah yeah sorry i'm just in interpreting here uh, interfering here i mean whatever it is like uh, as you are discussing about uh, your artworks no 
that means there was yes. a major shift and also the methodology changes so the method changes yes. yes so if you can elaborate more on the methodology and uh, the area like in what way you have moved from uh, the, the traditional paint making to the different methods yeah so so this is megali these are the works where the shift happened uh, these are the works where i was using uh, conventional etching plate like uh, a plate where you have to uh, do all sort of thing uh, in terms of plate making and i was uh, using engraving like engraver i was etching it with uh, with a moderant uh, with a different kind of a moderant as aluminum plate is not uh, like etchable with nitric acid uh, so i was using that and then then so so the, while i was displaying the plate it was all carrying the sensibilities of etching and uh, those who are uh, were acquainted with etching the new key how how beautiful it looks before print even you inked a plate and then and then you display it it, it looks beautiful it looks amazing uh, with all the characteristics of uh, print so i was using that plate surface which has a glossy surface and then on top of it while you are applying sunscreen the multicolor sunscreen layers uh, then uh, these two were uh, somehow or the other bonding with each other at uh, at certain point of time and that was precisely the methodology i was developing in terms of uh, the the work uh, i so and, yes. and then later on, later on this uh, later on uh, the uh, Let, just give me a second uh, i think there is a yes, problem sure, with sure. yeah okay i'll reshare okay. it all right yeah so uh, later on what happened ki uh, the the characteristics of humor characteristics the satirical characteristics translated in many forms so these this is the work which is a post that phase where i was using the same methodology as sunscreen but uh, but i was quoting from uh, very distinctive images like the in this uh, in this image binod bihari is tree lover the characteristics of the character in tree lover been quoted mm -hmm. and then uh, in that in then binod bihari's images he was standing uh, but here i i made him uh, sit on a red chair and red was a very definitive thing so silkscreen was uh, silkscreen is uh, is a kind of a method i was attracted a lot and uh, that was also a reason why there is a departure from there to there to now where i am right now because silkscreen okay. also having this kind of an elements of photosensitivity so i was interested in chemistry and and chemistry was one of my i would rather say alchemistry was one of my favorite subject uh, along with visual art and then uh, i had uh, an affinity towards that uh, al alchemistry or chemistry what do you say uh, where you mix, you have two chemicals and mix together and you have a third one or a fourth one uh, that somehow or the other give me a kind of a joy of doing it and uh, and uh, and these are the methods or print making somehow or the other gave me that joy as well Uh, where i was connecting it with the process so process became an important phenomenon in my work at certain point of time and slowly it started developing that uh, okay yes so you are going to please show some more images if you have of your earlier works yes yes so that like yeah then we can uh, we can, i mean the audience can also view the difference and the change Yeah. So yeah. these are the, these are my earlier uh, works, uh, which uh, yeah. which later on shifted to a bit. Uh, these are gum bicrobate prints where you can see a, a very colorful surface has been used. Where I was also picking up materials from my own surroundings. But there was a significant change in between. Then I started developing. I started uh, uh, developing a photographic images. Started using photographic images. eventually yes. uh, and yes. i slowly leave the drawn images so so these are the later yes. on the images been photographed then manipulated uh, there was digital yes. manipulation and while printing i started manipulating it these are color gum mm -hmm. print gum bicrobate prints which uh, which was at that point of time in india was very unconventional probably i was the only one who was working with that uh, now mm -hmm. there are many people who works with it but that time probably i was yes. working with it 
and then uh, so there was a kind of a very interesting combination between chemistry uh, photography photosensitivity and print making mm -hmm. these three things comes together uh, and and made the whole thing and i was also realizing myself my potentiality me as an artist me uh, the the kind of an involvement i had with my images at that certain point of time uh, yes. yeah so those are yeah. my older works uh, Uh, these are your recent ones, no? These are these your are recent works, recent. right? Yes. 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 So here I have a question. Like your yeah. recent work, like uh, the process involved, uh, yeah. also like reflects a major uh, change, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, especially, yeah. um, for example, the historical photography, or if we say alternative photography, which now you are practicing. So if you can show more images to us and discuss about the alternative photography which you are into. now as a practitioner yeah so before st before starting that so what happened in between is this that photography became an an a very attractive uh, method for me uh, i i became more attracted towards photography and the time i started photographing uh, that was a film age and then later on there was a digital time when uh, everybody was purchasing very expensive digital cameras and people were processing it i was also affiliated towards it but then some or the other i felt that the manuality is missing in camera exactly it's all standardized in photography everything is standardized somewhat somebody yeah. sitting in us or in japan he will decide he what kind of a texture i want what kind of an tonalities i want and that is not that is not uh, uh, i wanted so uh, so i had a very strong uh, reservation towards it Uh, but then uh, it was also uh, very important for me that photography as a medium it, it has a kind of an evidential quality it 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 used as an evidence it has an evidential reality so photography in that sense it's is a uh, it's one of the most powerful images and the kind of an work i was working with now and that time period was important that i use something which which uh, in my image which been uh, talked about that okay this is an evidence and at certain point of time i realized ki uh, talking about society talking about the subaltern structure of society talking about the politics talking about the economics uh, and and uh, working in a corner of a studio uh, by excluding yourself from the entire society it's some or the other it's a kind of utopia i was developing mm. Uh, and mm -hmm. there, there was a kind of a reservation behind it, and then I took this uh, photographic medium. I justified photographic medium with working with, is that uh, while you are working with photography, you have to challenge yourself. You have to face it. You have to face that reality. You have to face that right. whole structure, uh, the structure you are talking about. It's not something which you can imagine in the corner of your studio and then you can produce. uh in terms of print making some or the other i had that reservations and i found ki okay the kind of in work i was doing it needs certain kind of in uh, a direct contact a direct conflict with the subject uh, so photography became important but then photography has a problem with this that it's very standardized the contemporary technology is very standardized then i started looking for the old technology the 19th century photographic method and i found ki there is a process called wakelet clodian the image you can see right now it's it's called it's called ambrotype it's used by with uh, wakelet clodian method which had been invented in 1851 and then it was there for few few more years and then it's all vanished the whole knowledge bank gone vanished so i started reviving it i started reworking it i started uh, reworking with the uh, the process the technique the history so here another element came in and that is history the photographic history of our right. country yes of mm -hmm. me the photographic history of my culture uh, mm -hmm. and obviously it was uh, it was linked with uh, the colonial uh, structure uh, the colonial era the colonial mm -hmm. history of uh so this work is particularly it's called uh, fairer people beautiful people fairer people equal to beautiful people equal to powerful people where the mm, fairness skin fairness uh, is is considered as beautiful and the beautiful is equal to powerful so this is a kind of an quotation came up with a discussion with my students those who had dark skin so i had a, right. a discussion with them and then 
then i told them ki at uh, in in 19th century there was a, a volume of book called oriental race and tribe a uh, documentation done by the british photographers where uh, that that is that is a kind of an uh, in documentation of indian and how they look like and everyone is there is black the if you look at you consider you look at the old yeah. photographs remember that yeah. everyone is black uh, in spite of whether he is a vicari or or an abab uh, the problem was there was a chemical problem and that chemical problem was there that the photo sense the photographs the images the process they were not sensitive to red and yellow hues and the fairer indians are all yellow having yellow hues uh, and red hues so this photographic technique cannot see red and yellow it can only see blue and ultraviolet red okay so okay where indian will be black represented as black which has a kind of an political content into it and that political content i started discussing with my students and then asked them that with whether they will volunteer me or respond to it towards it uh as i was working with the same formula the same method been used in that 19th century so this is one of my students portrait who who apply uh, talcum powder into his face uh, to respond that and talcum powder is white so it can be recorded but his skin color cannot be recorded uh, okay. these are other works of that series it's a series of works where i was clicking the portraits majorly Uh, and skin mainly mm mm yes uh, this body of work been displayed in um, chennai photo biennale last year and uh, the interesting point the reason i was showing this display view is this that uh, this is the hall where the photography education started in india in 1940s 1840s uh, this is the hall in chennai uh, government college of art uh, presently it's a museum where uh, these been displayed these works been displayed and uh, the works been contextualized through that place that that's that 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 particular place where in in reality the photographic history of india started uh, and, and thanks to pushpamala in who who designed the whole uh, exhibition and curated this show and she precisely decided to display it here because of that uh, mm -hmm. uh i'm coming to i'm i'm showing few of my recent uh, projects i think we are running uh, out of time uh, a bit no no we have time a bit yes you okay. please continue uh, yeah so this is this is the kind of an work uh, this is another project which is still ongoing and it's uh, it's all about that revisiting a displacement and this displacement is nothing but the displacement from our own villages the nearby villages and it's a it's a problem nowadays is that people are traveling people are migrating permanently from villages to to cities um, and it happened everywhere in west bengal the part where we live in shantiniketan it's it's a very prominent phenomena that the villages are becoming uh, empty day by day and people are coming around uh people are coming around and the villages are uh, empty avare kotha cholche kaaj cholche ekhane shona uh the villages are getting empty day by day so the problem is this that uh the 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 people who who the upper class of the villages those who are villagers those who are being educated uh at certain point of time there was a chain system a filter system that the educated class will uh, will pass on their knowledge pass on their guidance to the those people who are first generation learner or who are not learner who doesn't want to go to school but these people will uh, ask them to go to school and that mm -hmm. was a kind of ecosystem which which prevailed at certain point of time but because of this uh, crisis in agriculture and the crisis in in terms of the uh, the directly financial crisis of agriculture agriculture is not not uh, now a days it's a very lucrative uh, kind of a profession so these people are leaving these professions they are joining a job a job probably a clerk clerical job in an office in a government office if they get it if they are lucky to get a job uh, and they are living immediately they are living villages because they know ki village doesn't have a prosperous and it cannot provide a prosperous future for their kids mm. so what is happening and they are 
they're not leaving their houses. They're just leaving their houses in villages and they're coming back in puja or festive times. Right. And throughout the year, what is happening, like this image, you can see that this is a village. This is an, a, a, a house, abundant house in my village yeah. nearby where the, there is all sort of grass and everything is there. Nobody comes here. I started documenting yeah. these places, which uh, I was having my own memories with. Uh, I started, okay. I, I went to my village and I started documenting this, uh, these uh, images. And I was using a paper negative, a process called calotype, which is again, the one of the oldest process of uh, making photographs. And uh, I started working with it. Uh, these are uh, necessarily paper, the uh, 12 by 10 by 12 paper, which uh, need to be processed chemically and uh, which been converted into film. So this paper has been converted into film with chemical uses. And then it's been uh, clicked uh, in the camera and it been again came uh, like in the dark room, you need to process that paper. And then finally, as paper is not transparent, so finally you have to apply wax on top of it to make it transparent tra or translucent. Uh, so you got a negative. It's like a matrix. You, it's like a block in, in terms of printmaking. It's like a block you prepared mm -hmm. with, uh, mm -hmm. with a craft of photography. So now it is a craft of photography. Uh, okay. And then you, print it, then you print it with albumin, like egg whites. Okay, um, yeah. this mm -hmm. process. So these are the images where negative and positive both are important. And these landscapes were very important. Uh, to that displacement. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. So, yes. So, I mean, you, you are practicing and dedicatedly involved in experimenting with non traditional, if I can use this word, yeah. or non commercial uh, photography printing no? process. Mm. Then, uh, yes. I mean, uh, for the young artist, uh, can you enlighten them about the possibilities of alternative photography? Because we can see there are a lot of possibilities, but maybe. People are not so much aware, in India especially. So I have no idea about abroad. I'm sure they know, but if you can enlighten a bit about it. I'm just uh, interrupting for a moment. Uh, he can continue. Uh, there is two minutes time, so it will disconnect it. Please, everyone, join back again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You can continue, Arpanji. All right. So, uh, yeah. see, I'm not in a position, Meghali, to to encourage, like, to to. No, at least some uh, some uh, motivation to the young generation students or artists. Like, it's it's yeah. it's not. The thing is that the mediums are there. Mediums is is uh, like there are thousands of processes. There are thousands of mediums, and if you start choosing the medium first, then it's a problem. Then it's a gadda. So, uh, mm -hmm. so it's just the, all the other way around. Like you need to appropriate your process. You need to appropriate your methodology to your thought. So your thought, you need to decide ki your, what kind of a methodology, what kind of a process you need to express your thoughts. And in my case, what happened, like I started searching for it. Uh, I, I've never been trained with these processes. Uh, there are people who, who, there are people who like, I, I didn't knew all these methods. There are there are photographers who think that uh, chemicals are not available, nothing is available. But I am working with the process which been invented in 1850s uh, and I'm getting the chemical. So I had a dedicated uh, intention, intuition that, okay, this is the process I want to work with. If I have to do that, that first work, then I have to use this. The, uh, this work, this body of work, I was uh, talking about this on paper, the calotype process. Calotype is actually been used uh, to in, in British era in colonial India to, uh, to document the cityscape in a panorama format. So panorama been only used in, uh, anyway, I was talking about this panoramic structure. The panoramic structure was a colonial tool for documenting uh, urban spaces, cityscapes. And I was using deliberately the same method of uh, documentation, documenting urban uh, species, the cityscape, and the same methodology, the same policies of making panorama to click these displacements. Because somehow or the other, the colonial structure of uh, making things are certainly or the other responsible of today's displacement. Uh, 
Uh, anyway, so that was another work, and uh, this is another body of work. Uh, I have a few images with it, so I'll quickly finish it up. Uh, this is another interesting uh, area where uh, uh, where I was. Uh, it's a site specific work, and I was invited by uh, by. Uh, I forgot the name, sorry. Uh, I was invited in Barbil uh, and, and, and there was a workshop curated by Ushmita Shahu. Uh, it was on, on, uh, on, on it's, a, it's an interactive workshop it was. And then uh, I decided to work with uh, Barbil, you know, it's a place in Odisha and, and, and a place where uh, it's, it's known for its fifth largest iron ore minings. Uh, so it's a place where you will see that pockets of colonies, small, small colonies surrounded by very high wall. And then rest of the area is blank, empty hills, forest and red dust. Uh, there are there are small, small, tiny, tiny Adivasi villages inside in many places. But rest of the things is this. So it's a very strange, peculiar kind of a landscape Barbie is having. Uh, and I was uh, there working with a few college students from Bhubaneswar. And there was a foundation. There is a foundation run by Jagannath Panda, artist Jagannath Panda. I, I'm, I'm really sorry. I just can't remember right now the name of the foundation uh, uh, run by Jagannath Panda. And that was their initiative. So there was a couple of few. Uh, Utsa Foundation. Utsa Foundation. Utsa Foundation. Yeah. Right. That, that's right. Utsa Foundation. Thank you. So. Uh, there was a few uh, students of Bhuvneshwar Art College. They were helping me out, and uh, and I decided to make my own camera to capture Barbil and and the dichotomy between the economy and Adivasi mining. Uh, you know, these are very important issues in in terms of uh, in terms of uh, your own, own position. So I started I, I started making my designing my own camera, and uh, this is the image which you can see right now. It's a it's a homemade uh, design camera. It's oh, a pinhole camera. It's interesting. Uh, and and I, this camera been made. There are six of it, uh, and it's been dedicatedly made for this particular project where I was using large format X-ray films, X-ray medical X-ray films to click the images. Uh, and then it's been printed with iron uh, base material. My idea was there that to collect the iron dust and to print it with iron dust that particular material which i did later on in my studio but it was uh, these were the cyanotypes blueprints which needs uh, the iron uh, salts and which we did it there only in, in, in barbell only uh, these okay. are the images which i got and then uh, there are various kinds of images i was trying to target i was trying to locate note document the relationship between the the flow of money uh, and and the uh, job the job creation the mines and and the adivasi samaj the local local uh, local welfare let's say uh, there was a very strange story it's like you are going through a landscape which is a barren land which is uh, nothing is there like landscape you can suddenly see a factory in the distance and a wine shop in the left uh, the wine shop is uh, located in a place where nothing is there, only forest and hills are there, but you can get uh, expensive wine. And then you can get uh, the beer can, uh, just bank of the river, where nobody, I mean, nothing is there. But definitely there is a flow of money, which, which uh, leaves their traces uh, on the bank of the river. And there is a small Karo river. I was documenting that river banks as well. Uh, with the factory and the the whole structures, these are the images been clicked with that extra films on those cameras, and uh, been printed later on. Uh, this is one of the project which I'm uh, I have just finished. I'm I'm working with. This is another project. The earlier project has many more images, uh, and I can't show it here. This is another. Uh, uh, project where I was uh, working with uh, the archival materials. I, uh, now I, I, uh, there is a kind of a train. There is a kind of an uh, what to say? My my alienations, my my 
intention towards a kind of an archival materials, the photography as document, the photographic document as a piece of history. And then I was trying to connect it. I was trying to connect all these things. So th these are the images. I, I In the local studio, I got a bag full of images, uh, rejected images. And all those uh, photographs were printed in a small, tiny uh, silver gelatin paper. Uh, and these photographs belongs to 70s, uh, 80s, 90s. Uh, you can see the hairstyle and everything. Uh, so these are the images clicked for marriage proposal. So the title of the uh, work is Prastav, where these images been clicked for uh, marriage proposal for sending proposals to, to, to uh, mm -hmm. each other. Where mm -hmm. there was a definitive, uh, definitive uh, intention that how they will compose the, uh, the, the uh, portrait. How, so there was a very specific reasons of composing. There was a very specific reason of showing hairs showing a uh, watch on right hand uh, and there were hilarious images uh, in this whole group. So, so what I did, I actually took those images from there, scanned it and I uh, digitally removed the eyeball because it, 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 it what, was- What made point. you, sorry, I'm just interpreting, interfering here. What made you like remove the, especially the eyeballs or eye parts? Is there some, yes. what so was the I reason was, for that? No, so, so yeah the reason is very simple the reason is this body of work is interactive so eyeball is not there printed but it is on the viewer to place eyeball and made a kind of a connection so through okay. that you establish a gaze in between one portrait to another portrait and portrait to the viewer and it works like this way so there's a okay. small bindi, small uh, black dots bindi uh, which been fixed over there on that uh, image itself and which is movable so an, a viewer can move the images move the bindi uh, and so so by by moving the bindi you can change the expression of the face as well as the, you can establish a different kind of a gaze uh, with each other and it was very specifically as it was marriage proposal the images been captured because of marriage proposal. So gaze was very important. And it also lead to a gender uh, issues. It leads to issues which uh, in 70s or 60s, there are there are images where where how uh, people been looked at, how gender been looked at. So these issues were very important. And I just, uh, I wanted to leave it on the viewer that how they engage those images. These frames were, these images were displayed one after another in a tight, uh, the way you can see it now, and then you can change it. So you can change the relationship. I have a very short video about it. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, yes. I think you can show, yeah. yeah. I'm just running it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's this is how the eyeball changes and the viewer is supposed to change the eyeball and to respond okay. towards it. Okay. Uh, okay. This is a work which is still ongoing, but it's a, a part of work being done. So I'm showing it. Uh, as I was uh, talking about that, my interest has shifted from there to now uh, in a more archival material, more, more material where found photographs are important. Archival photographs have become important. And uh, it happens like that way. I, I, like a sniffer dog, I sniff everywhere for old photographs <laughs> and like in dustbin of my localities in the uh, woods, uh, wherever it is, it has been found. So this is, these are the photographs of a huge, large body of photographs, letters, uh, passport images, passport, an old passport. And these are uh, telegram and these are as old as uh, 1950s, 1940s. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is what I got in my own locality in a bush, inside a bush. Somebody has just cleared up their own uh, Almira and all these things and they just throw it out. Uh, and these are found photographs. I do not know who are the who is the owner of these photographs, but I found it. And then uh, I started connecting uh, these images with the found letters, found uh, uh, found uh, telegram, telegram where the death news of uh, of of uh, death is there. So these are very sensitive elements uh, uh, I, I got. 
uh, there are a lot of text I got. Uh, and these all photographs are having text on the other side, which are uh, as old as that. Like uh, you can see, uh, if you can okay. see that, these are dated like yeah. 1958, 19, uh, it's a specific date was there, the text is there, uh, which is very important to me. And, and uh, this somehow or the other gives me a kind of a sense of, uh, a sensational sense uh, of handling these photographs that these are these are real evidences of certain point of time somebody has clicked it to preserve a memory and that memory is lost and that unknown memory is with me right now so i uh, now i'll i'll use these materials and then i'll i'll rebuild i'm, I'm rebuilding the whole narrations on a whole story so now uh, uh, a detective inside me, a Feluda kind of a detective inside me. <laughs> yes, that's Nine reflecting years. actually. <laughs> yes, yes. It is no, reflecting, I'm but it's very interesting. Another yeah. position to another position. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yes, so uh, now, Arpan, uh, just one minute. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the thing is that now I would love to listen, to know more about your studio. Not me, but all of us are waiting eagerly. The activities which are done there, and your studio Goppo. Yes, yeah, so Meghali, at certain point of time, I found that the kind of work I do, uh, probably an exhibition, a simple exhibition, is not the answer of viewing my works or my efforts. Uh, that was a problem. I, I never wanted to exhibit my works in a, in a simple, yes. straight, yeah. forward way. So, uh, and, and somehow or the other, I feel felt that the kind of work I do, the kind of research I do, the kind of processes involved in it, without sharing that uh, with a person who also enjoys that process, it's impossible to share. And that was precisely the policy uh, we have taken, uh, uh, me and my wife, uh, who is also an art historian, we jointly decided to develop a studio dedicated to people, dedicated to, 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 to those people who are interested in history of photography, who are interested in in photographic processes, historical photographic processes, the old ancient processes, uh, and 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 definitely something which is related to sensitivity of light. Uh, we are we we started opening up our things to them uh, over the time over the period of time we have collected a lot of books, information, processes. I have developed many things, and then we started developing it. We started opening it up with the studio format. The studio, uh, I started from my own money and then later on I found if I, if I keep on running it from my own salary, then uh, slowly I'm going to just uh, drain my entire salary into it. So we thought to make it sustainable. Uh, and then we started thinking in terms of workshops. So we, we started uh, providing workshops with a money, with the fees. And then we started <clears throat> reinvestigate, re reestablish that structure with it we started purchasing books and we started make the the whole idea of uh, historical photographic practices a very strong phenomenon so we started purchasing book we started doing a whole lot of things this was started like five years back uh, when we uh, opened up the studio now it's almost we are five years old and uh, we have recently introduced uh, the residency program, international residency program, because of COVID, we had to stop everything. But before, just before COVID, uh, we uh, there was an artist from Denmark who, who were our first resident artist who, who was here for around two months, and then she did a, a fantastic body of work. Uh, so there was a political position. There was there was a not different kind of a position. Not a, I won't say political position, a different kind of a position of viewership, like. I was trying to addressing viewership of my own work, of our practices. And this was the answer. The studio was the answer. And it was very successfully answered the whole queries of us, the questions around viewership, that how you are going to, how you are going to address your viewers, how you are going to share your works. These are the phenomena which became more important. And studio where I am right now, it, the structure you can yeah. see, it's, it's all, uh, inside our studio, where we started developing this work, this particular project. Uh, these are some of the images of, uh, of the workshops, earlier workshops, uh, where we started working with this large format cameras. Uh, 
people around the uh, around the country and there are many many artists from a uh, uh, different uh, country particularly bangladesh there were a lot of artists from bangladesh they have attended our workshops and they have contributed to the knowledge we are jointly developing on on alternative photography or historical photography processes we regularly uh, so it it became a kind of a collective where we regularly uh, discuss we regularly uh, explored the the artist works with our students in kalabhavan and the university vishwar university uh, and that's how it works yeah i'm done with my presentation so now we can yes uh, it was wonderful uh, the discussion was really it's like very informative and we got to know more about alternative photography and i am sure the viewers are also waiting to discuss with you more about you know uh, your works and there are lots of questions maybe the viewers are waiting for so uh, can i pass it on to pranamita yep yeah hi mikali uh, hi so uh, yeah i don't want to ask anything uh, i'm also uh, really uh, thrilled to see practice of uh, arpan mukherjee i have uh, and i was not familiar with his work and uh, and yes uh, i i also didn't knew actually I, i as a curator i have not worked much with photography artists and it was really uh, amazing to see arpan ji's works and especially with uh, so much of experiments and alteration it was uh, great and uh, now um, the presentation is over so anyone from the audience if you would like to ask anything you can raise your hands or uh, type in your questions or you can just systematically open up your mics and uh, ask if there is anything it will be great uh, because interaction uh, should be there so the whole and yes the studio gopo i really liked uh, the idea the whole uh, people gathering in coming and the energy in that it's very interesting it was anyone from the audience uh, who have joined us today uh, it will be great if you come forward and ask because it is an opportunity to have a direct interaction with uh, arpan mukherjee the artist he have shown his practice and uh, meghali is i think uh, yeah. there is one question from uh, i got privately it's from shorya uh and uh, is asking can you brief the alternative photography scenario here in india please uh the scenario of alternative photography in india is uh, it's very new uh, we started like uh, the goa center for alternative photography was the first uh, goa center for alternative photography established in goa uh, around 2011 12 or or 10 probably Uh, that was the first studio, uh, uh, a studio which had a kind of an uh, infrastructure with it. I personally, I, I started working since 2001. Uh, I'm working with alternative photography, but that was a personal, uh, uh, personal kind of an uh, process, personal kind of an uh, area where I was working my own studio in Chantiyatan. Uh, but then uh, Goa Cap was uh, initiated in the beginning. and then later on some of the other goa cup uh, is not not functional now and last 5 years we are working with it we we uh, i can proudly say that we made a significant difference we made a significant uh, impact in in the uh, alternative scenario in, in india and in 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 the neighboring country like bangladesh where uh, we became the source of this processes uh, in the scenario and then we can say that uh, from our uh, the our students and one intention was there of us was there that there will be many studio gopo in india and abroad in places there will be each city will have one studio gopo and so the the policy is this that once we got a student once we got an artist who works with us we always support them over phone over over video chat over all these things so that he or she could establish another studio in there and then he can there there could be another collectives uh, with not only alternative photography but with with something with, with which is a creative 
photographic form creative forms which is uh, photosensitive which is which is which, which, which who are responsive to photo photon the light uh, so now uh, uh, as i know as far as my uh, information is concerned there is one studio in in delhi uh, one of our uh, earlier student of kalabhavan his name is ashish though he was not directly a student of mine but he has developed one studio in delhi uh, there was another studio recently opened up in Bangalore, Studio Konike, where uh, two of my uh, students are there. Uh, they have learned uh, alternative photography from here. There are uh, uh, there is studio in in Bombay and in uh, Goa as well, where my students are there. And there are many others who are individually independently working with it. Uh, it is also very interesting to note that there are many other who. Mm, who are not directly connected with us, but they have independently started their own studio. Like in Ahmedabad, uh, there is one artist called Dhrup Malhar. He has started uh, a studio. Uh, uh, Camera Musico in Delhi, where uh, which also taking a, a, a great initiative towards it. And, and yeah, so this is the scenario tentative. So I would request the audience to please ask more questions because there are lots of things we should, uh, I mean, we are really wanting to know more from actually Arpan. Yes, Meghali, I have a question. This is Vikas yes. from Delhi. Oh, Vikas, how are you? I am very well, thanks. Yes, so, yes, yes. Please Arpan ask, ji. ask him. Yeah, yeah. Please. yeah, so it's very fascinating the presentation. Like. Uh, how you have developed the work over the years with a long practice of almost two decades now. So I have a question, like there is a mindset in the metro cities other than the Santi Niketan and the Calcutta art colleges. People think that the Santi Niketan art practice is very conventional form. The, all the pedagogy in that institution is very conventional. So have you had any kind of resistance or any kind of Reserve some restrictions when you started this alternative media of photography practice in the early years. I think Vikas ji, I think uh, the people who have this mindset of they should visit Chantiniyatan, uh, they haven't seen Chantiniyatan uh, long back. Like uh, they have probably seen uh, Ramkinkar Beige and Nandal Albos, and then they, then they ended their eyes. They just closed their eyes towards the eastern part of India. Uh, that's another problem, uh, problematic issue. Probably Shantinitan is one of the primary in institutions in India who are open to uh, to the contemporary art practices. And uh, for an example, like from an institutional point of view, I would like to mention this, that we are the only institutions who are having a different, a separate center for multidisciplinary uh, art practices. If you go through our syllabus, you can see that all contemporary methodologies, all contemporary perspective been included into our syllabus. And if you talk to our students, then you will find that. Uh, not only that, we are uh, currently linked with many foreign institutions where we regularly send our students in France, in Netherlands, in Thailand. And uh, we also receive students from these places. We have exchange program with these students. So, it is the problem of those people who think that because they haven't been Shantiniketan, they haven't, they just had our mind set up. Uh, it's not like that. We have a legacy of 100 years and it is one of the primary institution in India uh, who has contributed a lot in the field of art and uh, art and culture in, in Indian scenario. Uh, so I think that's a wrong uh, opinion. Uh, what if they have? Yes, yes. Thank you for clarifying this. I I was just like using the like wider perspective, what we actually understand from the people around us in uh, the conversation. Because yeah. the one another major, impo very important thing uh, I would like to say that the the work I was showing in the beginning where I was using aluminum plates and on silk screen on top of it, there was a whole lot of controversies and I, I was talking about 2001, 2000. Uh, I was doing those works and there was a whole lot of controversies uh, on the other way around that uh, whether these are printmaking or not, but wherever I have sent uh, in, in many, uh, including national exhibitions, uh, uh, it's not been selected 
and nobody considered is at print but it was appreciated a lot in shanti niketan when i i have displayed it and it was especially appreciated because because i was i was very clear and 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 that print making is not that it has to be on paper it has to come from a plate or from a stone print making is an idea print making is a is a uh it's 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 nothing like uh, it's an idea it's it it should work it it is all about its own aesthetic uh aesthetic ideals aesthetic languages so that been appreciated long back uh sure. so this is the scenario yeah Even today yeah. so scenario yeah India. go ahead no so the other question like uh, i just this is my perception the only my perception yeah. Is, do you feel is there any digital disconnect between the people who are practicing there into the like uh, mainstream art or the contemporary art practice working in metro cities because uh, as far as i we are practicing here in delhi so mm. i unfortunately have not seen your work personally of course i i know the works of chennai photo biennale or rahab's curation and when i mm. was going through your cv i have seen okay you were part of that thing and then i browsed through it but before that i was not knowing that okay some good artists practicing that prison in the alternative media practices and also they have been representing in the various exhibition all across india and beyond the border also so is the, do you feel is there a digital disconnect that you people are not there i don't think so but the, there is another problem is there that digital like we are running this uh, studio for last 5 years five years back we had our own websites uh, and we are regularly in the social net networking sites uh, we are regularly on the uh, other uh, other platforms uh, but the problem is this that uh, well uh, the, to me uh, i may be a little critical about it but to me the explorations are not been done in the eastern part uh, at all it's always looked at bombay bangalore Uh, delhi and Brother, the western no, no, no. western coast and that yeah. is another problem and and north east been only looked at because oh you are from north east so you are very kind of you have a problem so I'll, not with a dignity that's a problem okay. that's a that's a major problem and it, it is it is there it is there in, in the entire scenario uh, so i i personally i think this is a problem uh, with the whole mind setup uh, means a uh, uh, that need to be corrected yeah i understand like people like us we should do more research like we should not skip this place informations are everywhere yeah. informations are everywhere uh, things are everywhere uh, people from abroad can find us but why a person from delhi can find us i don't know yes yes so well point well taken because that's that's like lack of us like while we do research we try and tend to skip those places absolutely all right thank you i think it's also the medium as you're working in a very different medium which actually it's not so much as yet popular as in india if i'm not mistaken this is another part maybe there's somewhere i mean there is a missing link or a missing link on, on the contrary on the contrary meghali uh, like the students i get here for workshops is mostly from uh, the north and south okay. like i A lot of students from Bangalore, Bombay, uh, Maharashtra, or or Delhi. Uh, hmm. So that also happens. Okay. So any other questions from the viewers? <clears throat> so Namita, I don't think so. There is yeah. any, any questions. All yeah, right. Thanks okay. for. Yeah, yeah thank you thank you for um, being here and thank you to uh, see your amazing practice and uh, and uh, thank you all the guests for joining today thank you megali uh, for thank being for here and bringing arpan's work to us to see yeah. and to many other actually people. just just i want to just say a personal you know uh, uh, you know my feeling when i just first came to shantiniketan some few artists really attracted me one was arpan's work i mean it was so amazing and so different that from that time i was like 
even though i never got so much opportunity to go and visit his studio but whenever i you know uh, see or it's really very different and amazing so this was something which yeah. really i wanted like you know <laughs> to interact that's with true. him yeah that's true that's thank true. you yeah, so and uh, yeah. and hope um, of course you must be inspiring many of your students also uh, though you are in the print making department but uh, many artists are uh, getting inspired by your practice and definitely uh, they are following i hope so uh, we will see more uh, of your works as well as uh, new artists coming up with this uh, technique and inspired by this kind of form so uh, and uh, to everyone uh, this video will be recorded and we will share this with meghali and arpan ji those who uh, or any of your friends could not uh, attend today they can uh, see this recorded video and our past videos are also there in our youtube channel in shield art page and uh, we will be coming back with a new set of artists and a curator uh, next week and we will announce that in our social media platform so be connected thank you and thank you yeah. to know thank about you. you and your work yeah. see thank you, you all yeah. thank Bye. you thank you bye